Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for another breakfast with Blaha. And today I'm having steak, brown rice, and broccoli. Not quite the true bro meal because I do chicken, right? I do steak, so I'm not a bro, right? Not a bro. Technically, I eat like a bro. That's okay. It's a good thing. So let's talk a little bit about single joint exercises. You know, we come back over to, when I say this again, people say, you just don't like curls. I do curls. What are you talking about? I do lots of curls. I'm very specific in the types of curls I do. I don't do single joint curls. When I curl, I just like to use things like fat bars and come all the way up. Right. I, ironically, you know, everyone thinks that I have tiny biceps. They don't realize my arms are bigger. They're bigger than they think they are. It's my proportions. I had some people notice that when I did that charity event. And the pictures that had come out later next to all these other lifters. Or like someone said, How, when did your arms get that big? Like, what do you mean? They've been bigger on camera than they are now. They're actually a little smaller. They're not at their biggest. They've always been that. They've been that big a while. Not always. They've been that big a couple years. I'm not anti-curl. What I am is against bad training economy. And the thing is, I see this all the time. This gets brought up when someone will say, well, Jason, single joint exercises are just free. Which is such a bizarre concept because we talk about overuse. We talk about injuries, we talk about these things, we talk about recovery, and I'll get people, well, small exercises, you could do them, you could throw in whatever, a, a lateral raise, because it's free work for the shoulder, there's no recovery, which is ludicrous, absolutely ludicrous, like saying curls are free recovery, you just train your band, you have unlimited recovery, a single joint, no, you don't. Those individual muscles still deal with that. And when it comes to tendons, single joint exercises will accrue overuse in tendons faster than big movements. People have this misconception that because big multi-joint movements use more weight, that they must be causing more overuse by default, right? But that's not the case because here's what's going on. That weight is being distributed across multiple joints and tendons. And it's usually being distributed in a way that's a natural movement pattern. In other words, your body is not designed to attempt to isolate muscles. It doesn't like it. You were not built that way. And I always say that to people, isolation isn't real. There is no such thing as an isolation movement. They're not called that in the science called single joint movements and they're called that because isolation is a bizarre bodybuilder concept it's not it's not based in real physiology in other words this idea that you can isolate a muscle is fantasy it's a delusion you can't do it you want proof Try to do the strictest machine fly you can do and hook up an EMG and see if, see if your pec becomes the only muscle that activates near 100%. It won't be. It is impossible to not train the interior deltoid when you train the pec. Any exercise that works, any part of the pec, will absolutely use the front delt. Absolutely use it as a primary mover. Same thing with a curl. You can't isolate your bicep. You can't do it. And the funny thing is, the more you try to isolate it, the less you use it. But you can't take the brachialis out. You can't take the forearm flexors out. You can't remove them from a curl, even locked into a machine. You can strap your arm down and lock them into a machine. You cannot isolate the bicep. Furthermore, 
if you try to lock it into a full single joint exercise, what actually happens? You work the bicep even less because the bicep also is involved in this. See what I'm doing? That is part of the function of the bicep. You're not working the muscle through its full range of motion now because you're attempting to isolate it. You see where I'm going? It's, it's not actually useful. You're working the muscle even less trying to take other muscles out. Well, then what happens when we go into a real curl? You know, We start working different parts of the shoulder joint, the trapezius. Sometimes they get worked high enough to actually get a training response. Right? It's not in our best interest to do this. But the thing is, it puts us in unnatural positions easier. The more you try to isolate a muscle, the more you put tendons at bizarre angles that our body is not designed to do. We're not designed to try to isolate muscles or only move a single joint. We always do things in a way that incorporates other muscles. And when you attempt to do that, it puts weird strain on tendons. Well, how do we get hurt? Tendon inflammation from overuse is one of the biggest contributors to injuries in the weight room. And look how many people who try to train that way still complain about being beat up. What does everyone out there know causes elbow tendon pain? It's not bench pressing. It comes out when you bench if you have it. That's when you feel it. It's trying to isolate the triceps too much. Doing too many single joint movements, particularly things like skull crushers, for example. All right? Stuff beats your tendons up. It makes what makes your elbows hurt. How about guys who kind of get that golfer elbow thing to where, oh, it hurts all down here. How many of them do preacher curls? How many of them do concentration curls? I must say the preacher curl is the number one contributor. Look at that angle it puts the tendon at. Too many lateral raises. Oh, it's free recovery. No, it's not. Until it inflames your glenohumeral joint. And it's not free. What if you already have some shoulder issues? Mm, it's going to flare them up pretty quickly. You'd have been better off finding a bigger multi-joint movement that distributes that load further. Okay. Qu quad's the same thing. How many guys who do a lot of leg extensions complain about knee pain, patellar tendon inflammation? Right? It's exactly how we get these problems. And I'm not saying to avoid single joint movements. I'm saying they're not free in terms of recovery. I'm saying done with too much volume, single joint movements will cause overuse faster than your big movements do. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.